Hey, I've got something in the video. Postman's Bean. So what have we got? This is uh, not railway stuff, but it's going to be added to the railway. Now, I've, I'm, I'm complete now on the anti-aircraft battery in the middle of the train set. So that's all looking fantastic. It's got the figures on, it's got everything on. So I can't really do much more than that, but I want to add to it. If you remember, I've built the anti-aircraft battery to resemble uh, the one that my grandfather was on, on Orkney, on the island of Hoy. Now, also on the island of Hoy, when I went to visit and visited the gun site and so on, I went and found an aircraft wreck, a crashed Lockheed Hudson Mark I that was on top of Withy Gill. This crashed in March 1941, while my grandfather's battery was there, while my grand grandfather was on site. So I thought, well, okay, I haven't built a model aircraft for a while. I certainly haven't built a 172 scale for a while. So I've bought a Lockheed Hudson Mark I, which I'm gonna do in those markings. Not as a crash, but flying over the top. Anyway, it's arrived today. It's the Airfix Lockheed Hudson Mark One. Now this is an old kit from the 60s that uh, by the time this version came out a lot later was not only an old mold from the 60s, it was a worn out old mold from the 60s. Anyway, this is boxed, sealed and everything as new. So this is going to be my next project, the Lockheed Hudson Mark One of 220 Squadron. I'm going to undo the cellophane. This is going to be part one. And that's gone. So, this is shown in, in Pacific markings. Okay, there's a couple of zeros. Or Oscars, I'm guessing zeros. Okay, let's open the box. Lovely artwork. I do like the artwork on the old Airfix boxes. So, let's see what's inside. Well, there's quite a lot of decals. Look at that, lovely big decal sheet. Now, this isn't going to have the right squadron codes, unfortunately. So, I'm going to have to get some separate letters to put on the fuselage. That's fine. I can do that. Then we've got... The instructions. Uh, da -da. The Hudson was the first American aircraft to be used operationally during the Second World War and was in fact in use by RF Coastal Command shortly before the outbreak of war. The Hudson 1, which first flew in December 1938, or oh, that's 1838 here, was developed to British requirements from the Lockheed Type 14 Super Electra. This was an airliner. The first aircraft for ships across the Atlantic and the Bolton Pool dorsal turret was fitted. Ordered as a navigational trainer, the Hudson was found to be ideally suited for general reconnaissance duties and replaced Ansons in Coastal Command squadrons. Coastal Command Hudsons, one which is represented by this model of an aircraft of 206 squadron, had several outstanding operations to their credit, including leading the Royal Navy to the German prison ship Altmar in February 1940 and sinking many U-boats in the early years of the war. After America's entry into the war, the Hudson was adopted by both the US Army Air Force as the A-29 by the US Navy as a PBO-1. The Hudson 1 was powered by two 900 horsepower Wright Cyclone engines giving a maximum speed of 402.33 kilometers an hour and a range of 3,218.65 kilometers. Armament consisted of four 3.38 Armament consisted of four .303 machine guns, two in the turret and two fixed in the nose. Bomb load was 635 kilos. Wingspan was 19.76 metres and length 13.52 metres. Now you can tell this is a more modern version, more modern printing. Ah, oh, 2006 date, 2006. So it's a 14 year old kit. Um, because everything's metric. So except for the 0.303 inch machine guns, which they've misprinted as 0.383. So they haven't done very well on proofreading. Let's have a look then. So let's open up these instructions with my left hand. Study drawings and practice assembly, blah, 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 blah. blah. There's some bits here. Do not cement together, cement, assembly phase, decals, 
white, blah, blah, blah. Apparently there's alternative parts and there's parts that you don't use. But very simple cockpit and gun turret. Yeah. That's all nice and simple. This is going to be annoying. So you've got all that glazing down the side windows there. That I've got to put in without fogging up with the um, glue. And then I've got to paint without fogging up with the paint. Fogging, I said. Right. Engine bay, wings, wheels, tailplane. That looks quite a complicated tailplane, actually. Put the engines together. And there's the, the all the parts going together. So that actually looks like it's going to be quite a nice little kit. It's a medium-sized kit, so it looked quite good on the train set. These are the... Uh, various markings and patterns you can put on. So two squadron, Royal Australian Air Force, Lockheed Hudson three. And what three, I want one. Lockheed Hudson GR three from the New Zealand Air Force, number four squadron. These are both 1943, so it could be that those are alternative parts for that. Lockheed Hudson 206 Squadron, RAF Coastal Command, 1941. So that's the colours that we're going to want to be doing it in. Okay, there's another one from 269 Squadron, RAF Coastal Command, in Iceland, 1941. It's the same, same colours, 29, 30 and 90. They're the humble colours, obviously. There's actually loads of different colours you can use. Look at all that. I ain't going out and buying all that lot. It cost me a fortune. That's 35, 40 quid's worth of paint. But the camouflage markings are pretty similar. Now, let's have a look. What's the last page? I can't get it open. Yeah, that's no good, is it? Oh, blank. There we go. So, that is it. Okay, back down again. So, let's have a look in the box. What have we got? We've got a fuselage half. We have another fuselage half I mean that looks pretty decent actually the detail on it's all right it's fine apparently it doesn't go together all that well but I've seen fine now wings and engines the underside wings oh we've got uh, we've got gunner we've got some guns we've got Flaps and ailerons and engine parts and seats and so on. We've got the tailplane and various other bits and bobs. A couple of crew members there. Wheels, props, undercarriage legs. Same again here. And uh, that one's fallen off the screw. That's how that. So, an undercarriage leg, an oleo. Funnily enough. I know exactly what they look like because I found one while I was up on that mountain. So here's uh, the other engine and then loads of glazing. Mm. It'll be quite good. I don't think it'll be a long build. It might take a bit of extra time with the filling and so on. Good with the painting too. That'll be fun because I've never airbrushed an aircraft kit and doing the camouflage pattern as well should be quite good. Anyway, that will be started on part two.